essentially, we were tasked with the issue of trying to find out how to reclaim uh, as much water as we can. I think it was about 15 acres of water uh, in between a one mile stretch of Biona Creek. And the major challenge was that, and this is that stretch here from Washington Boulevard down to uh, Higuera Street, which is right here, right above of Baldwin Hills uh, Conservancy uh, or the Overlook. And the challenge is, as you can see, there's just so many small properties. And the, the, the challenge of reclaiming 15 acres of water, all the land agreements, and, and, and all, it's just too difficult, not really feasible. So um, the first step we tried to do was we essentially got a, a base map done. And base mapping can be extremely expensive when you go through conservative uh, methods where you have uh, surveyors on the ground. They run about 2500 bucks a day, and that just wasn't feasible. So. We got a, a, a survey group that was able to fly this with a drone in one day. And then they basically cross-referenced the, the footage they got with public GIS data to find out what known utilities are around. And we started there. I gave that data to a hydrologist and they essentially started mapping out where all the high, uh, or where the most water is. And the idea was if we're gonna spend money trying to investigate uh, water capture, we definitely wanna go to this point, the points that have the, the maximum amount of water so we can get the best bang for a buck. Uh, and what we, we, what we found was this, a bunch of interesting things. For example, um, there's this uh, treatment plant, a water treatment plant that it doesn't seem like it's in operation anymore. And it used to be for uh, well water. And it sounds like the, the contamination and the groundwater supply got to a point where operating this facility is no longer feasible. So looking at that, that was a, a good idea to look at and say, well, can we repurpose this possibly because it has two major storm lines that come in right there. I can't remember the figures, but it's hundreds of acres of, of, uh, of water just at this point. But the, but the downside is, you know, if we do a project like this, no one's gonna see the benefit because it's still a facility. And the idea was we wanted to give the community something. So we kept investigating and eventually we found uh, this black welder tract here. And we found this trail here. And the idea is currently this trail isn't really public. It's uh, got an access easement and uh, and there's really no, uh, you know, designed landscape in the area. But all these businesses back up against it, which uh, creates an opportunity of, you know, of ways being, businesses could potentially mingle with the, with the trail. So the idea was we will repurpose this and create a trail that's public. And that would, that would boost, you know, the um, uh, employee engagement with the area. You can uh, get the public going through here. So it seems to get some multi benefits and ultimately it butts up against the creek. And that's really where we wanted to focus our, uh, our efforts was to try to give the community something along the creek so that they can start enjoying these, uh, these creeks because that's kind of the sad thing is that they're all concreted and you just drive past them but nobody tries to engage with them. And I think when you start engaging with these creeks, uh, you'll start seeing a lot a more uh, more of these projects pop up so but this alone will probably and likely not claim the water we need so we looked at another site and that's uh, Hayden track down here so Hayden track after walking it um, there's actually a really nice flat strip of land right behind it and um, so we're looking at is that along the creek yes that's right along the creek yeah, yeah. and you you mentioned Milton Street Park so it's a pretty similar situation but um, currently, it's just essentially an easement. It's not being utilized. These businesses just put a fence up. Uh, all these all these streets that you see coming down here, essentially all the water, and this is about 15 acres by itself here, but all that water basically collects into these drains and then dumps into the creek. So the idea is now we're looking at investigating this and saying, can we give the community a, a strip park and uh, reclaim all the steps it takes to do these projects you know uh, not everybody knows how to do them and uh, they don't have to be huge they can be scaled down to your front yard and I think education is the biggest key here is that when you start teaching uh, the average person how to do this process on their own and a smaller scale then I think we can see good things um, and th this when you see a storm drain for example Let's see if I can find one, but here's a, you can see some in here. There's an outlet there, but essentially what happens is the storm drain has a tributary area of its own. 
And so there's two aspects to the project. And when you're thinking, what's the problem of water, stormwater going to the creek, other than the fact that we're not reclaiming it and using it, is that it, ca it carries a lot of contamination. And that contamination is mostly from our cars, uh, but also more uh, common is it's from turf and all the, the stuff you put to keep your lawns clean, uh, washing your car in your driveway. So if you can see a storm drain coming into a creek like this, essentially what's happening is more than likely these neighborhoods are part of that tributary area. And every right. single person that's washing their car is dumping these chemicals into the creek and it's having a negative effect on the ocean life. Um, so when you do these projects, one step is reclaiming as much water as you can through the infrastructure. But then the, another and I think more important step is actually the education on the tributary area and and trying to stop the contaminations before it gets to the point where you're reclaiming. And that can be done through outreach programs, uh, you know, turf removal programs. But like I said, the city has these turf removal programs and they're very effective. I used it on my own house. Uh, but the challenge is you have to apply for it. A lot of people don't even know about them. And then they don't know what's the first step do I do anyway. <coughs> so, right. so we're trying to look and, and see, you know, what can we do to kind of reinforce the turf programs? Um, and it sounds like people, essentially, if they can just get handed a turnkey kind of uh, option of, you know, hey, here's a guy that can strip your turf. Here's a guy that can dig for you. And, and, and here's a guy who can help you design a garden. You know, if someone had all that, uh, I think we would we would see a lot more of these turf programs being utilized. Um, understanding from the owner itself that it does take an investment, uh, showing them what the benefit really is, and that's you know, for sure the sustainability of our planet really. <laughs>